Hello, my friends. God bless you very, very much. The greatest blessing that God wants to give us is to make His dwelling place in us. And when that happens, and then heavens come down here on earth, heavens actually come down in us, makes its dwelling place. This is what God wants. This is the greatest desire of God for your life. But why that didn't happen yet? Why I don't have the Holy Spirit? But I have the Holy Spirit, Bishop. Even I spoke in tongues. But my life does not agree, does not match with the presence of God in me. I look at my life and I see as a failure. And I say this in regards to the economical failure. But... A spiritual failure. I feel always a, like a sad person, downcast. When I'm in church, I even feel very good. I even sing. The song makes me to feel a good sensation. But when I leave the church after a few hours after, there it goes. Here I am back feeling empty. That is why the Holy Spirit is not in you. You were not baptized of the Holy Spirit yet. And as a consequence, heavens did not come to you. And then you become a person still bitter, sad, downcast, etc. But don't feel sad. The promise remains alive. The word of God does not come back void from the moment that you have thirst to receive the Holy Spirit, not only desire, not only will, one thing is to have a desire, I desire this or that. Something else is for you to have thirst, hunger for the Holy Spirit. And someone asked, Bishop, how can I have thirst? Pay attention, the spiritual thirst, the thirst that God refers here, when Jesus says, he who thirsts, come to me, this thirst is that will, that desperate desire, the immense desire that is above all that there is in this world. This is what is thirst. Look, I want the Holy Spirit above all things, not only to say, I want. No, you have to truly want. You have to surrender yourself. My God, I do anything, I pay whatever price, I do any sacrifice, I do anything, but I want to have your spirit. This is thirst. And when the person is dressed, embodied, with this strong desire above all things, and then he comes. He comes in a natural way, because he also has the desire to come and live in you, but he only can do it with your permission. If you don't allow him, he cannot come. But Bishop, I want, I allow him to come, but it's not just to allow on desiring. No, dear friends, you need to have thirst. You need to want him above all above the boyfriend, the girlfriend, the fiancé, above the dress, the new clothes, above the car, above the job, above your health, father, mother, children, the boyfriend, anyway, above everything, that's it. He has to be the first, the priority. This is called thirst. Come on, Bishop, but this is a little hard. This is the proposal of God to us. That's why the psalmist said that on Psalm 119, he said the following, It is good for me that I have been afflicted. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes, your word, your will. So God, when the person really wants, 
Anyway, it's not really making a decision, wishy-washy, then he allows the person to go through the depths of the waters, through the valley of the shadow of death, through the wilderness. The person is taken to a situation that they find themselves suffocated. They are drawn to the bottom, to the depths of the pit. And when the person is on the depths of the pit, there's nowhere else to go down, then there's no other alternative but to look up and to scream strength very loud, the strongest that they can do, that, that there may be someone there at the top of the pit and he can throw a rope. And in that moment, the person manifests the thirst, manifests the hunger. That's why Jesus does the invitation come all those who are heavy laden and burdened because he knows, he knows when the person still has something that they can count on, that they can lean on, let it be money or family, religion, whatever it may be. As long as they have something that they can lean on here in the world, they will not prioritize the Holy Spirit. But when they have nothing else, and there is the reason for the campaign of Israel. The campaign of Israel is exactly for these people. It's exactly for that, that the person may put themselves, jump into the arms of God with all their heart, with all their strength, with all their soul, above husband, wife, family, everything, everything. It's all, all for everything. He gives everything to those who return, who give their all, who give their all. It's all for all. Dear friends, learn this. God bless you, and until tomorrow, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, very soon, I'm going to post a testimony that I would like you to pay close attention, because this testimony is one of the most beautiful ones that I've ever heard. All are magnificent. As long as God has worked, all are magnificent, but this one it touches us. It has a teaching. It does not only show the miracle, but shows a teaching that is worth for your life. It works for your life. Very soon I'm going to post that and pay attention. God bless you and until tomorrow, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen.